Some boats do 50 hours per year, but other boats like this one do 150 hours on average. Why is that the case? Keep watching and I'll tell you. Super sporty, you know, if you want to have an enjoyable ride but feel confident, or 51 landing nicely, skipping really well. I'm doing that at 51 knots, guys. <laughs> this is really fun! So this is the wave part of the test, guys. We're in quite a dangerous stretch of water, actually. So I suggest most of you uh, don't try this at home. I'm really just demonstrating to you what the boat can do through a few waves. Up ahead, we have breaking waves going in three directions and some quite monstrous swells. So I'm just gonna drive the boat at a safe speed. Now I'm gonna transit to the standing position, turn my hat back, and just feel the boat through these rolling waves. And what I will do before I get to the brake zone, I'm gonna brake right, I'm watching the waves now, feeling the boat, feeling the boat, coming in at 24 knots, up and over. Observations are, I've been doing this all morning, she's a dry boat, she's a dry boat. Now I'm gonna brake right before we get into the, into the braking waves. And I'm, wow, there's some guys out there surfing this stuff. They're all surfing on jet skis today. Very impressive. So she appears to be a dry hull through waves. That's both wind chop and swell. Now we're gonna run down these waves and we'll just have a bit of a play. You can really um, reposition your body as it suits you. Right now I'm standing, but if I'm in some of the rough stuff, I can lower myself down, put my feet on this footrest and push my body weight into the backrest of the seat, which is quite comfy. Just coming through there at 26, 27 knots, doing a couple of S turns. I've got swell going that way, a couple of bit of wind chop and some bounce back. So this is what you would consider challenging conditions for any boat. And we've got more breaking waves that have bounced off the rocks over there and they're now making their way onto the shore here, I'm going to come in and bounce over this one, and then I'm going to break left. Fun. Look at that. Super sporty. You know, if you want to have an enjoyable ride, but feel confident whilst doing it, or as I suspect many of you are going to be thinking about, if you just want a boat that's going to get you home when the weather has changed, just pay attention to the lack of water that came up on deck. All right, let's get in to some flat stuff and really put this thing through its paces. One thousand three hundred kgs, guys. Twenty-three degrees of dead rise. We've got the three hundred horsepower on this one. You can also fit it with a 200 horsepower and this boat is trailerable. Just remember that. So we're just gonna play with the performance on the semi-flatter water. This is not flat, we still do have a bit of surge. I'm just gonna talk to you about what I described. No trim tabs, auto trim on the motor, coming through at 30 knots. 30 knots, 170 litres on board today and we've got about 240 capacity total. Just got hands sitting in the back, myself, and some equipment. Very, very smooth is one of the observations. I'm just gonna increase my speed as we uh, hug the coast here. Uh, it sits very comfortably in that low 30 knot range in what we have here is a little bit of surge and some wind chop. I'm just gonna increase that speed a bit. That's 4,500 revs just there, giving me 37 knots. So I'm actually gonna slow that down 
and just look at that under 4,000 revs under 4,000 revs and we're still at 30 knots but let's give it some got a few waves here it's not going to be a completely accurate demonstration but 5,100 revs 5,200 revs 43 knots of climbing got some waves nestling myself in 47 knots the acceleration is really noticeable a bit light at the helm here 50 knots 51 landing nicely skipping really well this is fun and controllable i'm doing that at 51 knots guys i'm now going to hook it round to the right come off the gas and i'm going to do a semi hard turn feel it first i'm doing that at 40 knots now i'm going to tighten it up 37 lean in Whoa, this is really fun okay let's do some s turns the boat feels light yet controllable 35 knots lean into those turns i haven't felt at one time that i'm going to come dislodged from the helm position i'm maintaining this s turn at a speed of 37 knots that's incredible that is fun and it's sporty super sporty now let's go straight into the wind chop we do have some wind today and let's just see how we feel we don't have any spray coming over the boat i'm just maintaining 40 knots now i'm going to slow it down quite a bit of wind here hopefully those shots we used earlier gives you a sensation for what's blowing offshore that wind's just coming straight over this hill and chopping it all up here but these high gunnels are, are really giving us a bit of protection but i think the fender i believe the fender is what's deflecting spray because it's just not coming on board it's it's really quite impressive for what is such a small neat package you know that's trailerable you can beach this thing you can do so much i'm just gonna give it one more little blast because this is quite a lot of fun oh feel that acceleration <laughs> oh that's great fun okay let's go in to a dock because we really do need to demonstrate what that's like for you guys and i'll sit down that was with the seat flipped up i felt a little bit more in control uh, at those high speeds going through waves but you could totally dial it back to your 30 knots which now feels slow with this with this engine package and sit down and be quite comfortable but let's go into a dock now and i'm going to do a few touch and goes and just demo to you guys what that's like because you just you don't really need fenders you, you don't you don't have to have that as part of your kit on this boat so i believe that's going to just be one of those points that's going to be quite of interest to many of you guys because it's a time saver it's a time saver and that's that's what simplicity brings in a design like this keep watching so one of the big points of this boat guys is the amazing fender that we've got wrapping around the side it really does uh, position you or enable you to pull up to almost any dock fixed or floating and not bugger about with fenders you just don't need to it's so wide and it's got such a nice amount of cushioning factor it's just simplifying the whole process so i'm going to demo that straight away i'm just pulling into this fixed docked here dock here next to the boat ramp uh, and i'm just going to do a little a touch uh actually i won't touch and go i'll tie up and just show you how easy it is i don't have a bow thruster on this one the boat tracks nice and predictable i've got some tide and wind uh, behind me at the moment and I'm just gonna bring the boat in and so the other thing is from my position here at the helm see how close I am um, to the side decks it's just so easy I'll just straighten that up I can reach both lines and cleats so doing things like this is really not too hard so if you want to manage the boat by yourself i see this as a boat that you could absolutely do that look at that 
how hard was that or how not hard was that um, so yeah if you want to run the boat yourself keep your guests positioned on the seats just here or forward is, is what I would suggest you do you certainly can do that and the, you really only need to think about having one line ready to go obviously you can have more uh, when you need to secure the boat um, uh, for the end of the day but just coming in to do a, a touch and go pick up friends or food it it really is that easy that's that's something you need to think about welcome to Sorrento guys this is down in Victoria Australia not far from Melbourne City if for those of you who don't know and obviously the kids are practicing their sailing today so uh, please excuse some of the background noise but this is a part of the world where next stop is Tasmania or essentially Antarctica so the the oceans the winds and the swells that roll through this place can be immense I've got friends who've been rescued off yachts just out there in Bass Strait in a hundred foot seas the helicopter had a ground sensing radar and it was 100 foot swells when they winched him off to take him back to shore they didn't all survive so that's what you can get out there and this bay here really can chop up quite a lot so something that's fast with a deep V and dry is of great benefit to people in this part of the world and I know to many of you all around Australia because of the conditions that we get so this iron boats designed in Sweden is of great interest to me and so far it's been doing really really well here in Victoria and I think for those of you in Perth, Sydney and Queensland watching pay attention to this brand and a couple of points before we get walking through this boat right now that I want to make to you simplicity it's simplicity of design it's simplicity of transport simplicity of operation what do I mean by that? What they have done, they've just used the same hull and it gets longer with the model. So it's the same width. And then all of these internal components from the center console to the seats uh, and the structures through you, as you go through the boat, they're essentially all the same. You're just getting greater space in the bow and back in the cockpit as you go up through the model range. Now they do have, or they have just introduced a coupe for the biggest boat but the rest of them are all open like this so that keeps the production costs down when you keep that keep the production process simple and intelligent well not that what they've also done is designed it to fit in a container that's really intelligent because so many of the competitors to this don't fit a fit in a container so if you've got to get it to australia your shipping's really really high next thing it's got the best fendering system of any adventure boat that I've tested. It really is incredible. So as you can see right now, we're just bumping up against the fixed dock here. We haven't bothered. We, we didn't even bring fenders with us because we just don't need them. So a fender system that's that big with inches of travel on it in terms of the cushioning effect makes your life really simple to operate the boat. So getting it off a trailer, because you can trailer this, um, coming, on, uh, coming alongside a fixed dock or bumping in or rafting up with other boats it's just like operating a rib, but without the, the, essentially the dangers of popping a rib. And the other thing, because we don't have big rib tubes, we have extra usable space. So think about all of those things. Now we're gonna to tour through the boat. This is the 767. There's multiple models in the range. You'll have to jump on the website below to check those out. Um, but it's, what I like about this, it's a clean, no nonsense design. It does what it says it's going to do, as we just experienced. Um, goes like a bat out of hell. It's dry. I'm just showing you the boat as it is after we went through those waves. We didn't get any wash into the boat at all. A couple of drops on the back corners, as you expect on any boat, but that was it. And we have wind and we have swell and we have waves today. So that, that was really cool. Um, this is your access to board on and off the boat so um, anchoring it's all hand anchoring at the moment but they are the, the Australian dealers are exploring some solutions uh, to fit bow anchors so stay tuned for that I would also be really keen on doing just a hand stern anchor on something like this because it, you definitely would be beaching a boat like this and you have a huge locker underneath here which would also double as an esky 
to be fair, because you've got plenty of space there and you don't need much in the way uh, of anchor and chain because it's only 1,300 kgs all up. So add the fuel, 250 litres and the motor, yes, you can definitely pull it with any four wheel drive with a three tonne towing capacity. I know a lot of you are gonna ask that question. Now, look at the height of the gunnels. You know, that is something for those of you who are into your fishing might actually appreciate because some of these adventure boats had very low gunnels and I know a lot of you like to lean on the side to do your fishing maybe to go to the toilet, although you don't have to because we actually have a proper toilet, which we'll get to in a second. So that's a bit of a safety factor. But I, I think because of the fender on the side, um, it doesn't actually stop water coming in because the fender's already deflecting that, which you will hopefully already noticed on the drone shot. So just get a feel for the space here. We can actually uh, install a sun lounge up the front here and then come back around here hands and have a look back so everyone can see. This is the forward facing seat, which we do actually have space for two people. So you could, when you're in a lounging mode, you could definitely enjoy this. This thing will do 50 knots. So I'm not sure how often you're gonna have people up the front here at that sort of speed. But if you're conscious of your speed and the sea state, you could definitely run some people up here with their hats off or backwards in the right conditions. Cup holders, and then this opens up and it's a huge storage area or it's a toilet. So that's super handy. But now let's start to make our way back. You stay on that side and I'll come down this side. You can see the navigation lights, port and starboard, and this Perspex super stylish windscreen with aluminium, looks like powder coated black aluminium, um, st strengthening essentially. So it works very well and it gave us um, a good amount of protection from the wind at speed. So when I was at the helm, I could leave my hat on because the wind vortices were going over my head like so and around the side. But when I stand up, I'm 5'7", that's when I gotta take my hat off or turn my hat around. And above my head with the T-top, um, at 5'7", I've got that much headroom above me for you tall blokes. So these supports act like grab handles and they don't get in your way from a safety perspective. So when the boat's bouncing around, I didn't find that my head was getting too close to that. So that's okay. The shade, um, is quite good. So everyone at the helm is gonna be under the shade in the midday sun and on this seat just here, but the back seat there, you are gonna cop a bit of sun. So if that's a problem, sit here. So focusing on this seat here, I want you to remember that all of these iron boats have the same beam. So this seat is what you're gonna get no matter which size boat you get. And the differences are the length. So if you've got long legs, not like me, <laughs> and you need more space, just get the bigger boat. That's all that you need to think about. This table here is removable, so that can store in the toilet uh, forward if you wanna leave it open and use it for more wakeboarding, water sports, fishing, etc. We have an electric fridge underneath this seat and a good amount of shade for those people. And we have storage, access to batteries, a steering, hydraulics, etc underneath me here. So I would probably put my safety grab bag underneath here so it's easy to get access to if you get pulled over for an inspection. And all my guests bags may be up forward in the toilet. That sort of makes sense for that area just there. Um, we've got access into the fuel tank. It's an aluminium fuel tank, 250 litres. Your battery um, on off is just accessible on the starboard side and it's self-draining. So it's all self-draining. You can leave this boat on a mooring, it's not gonna fill up just here because those drains are gonna go over the side. So come out to the back here, we've got this flexi teak decking. I love this stuff, this is all installed in Australia because it's the better stuff for our sun. The Europeans use a slightly different grade to us. And this aft part of the boat, you do have quite a bit of usable space. So um, if you are wanting to access the water, you've got your telescopic swim ladder on starboard. But one thing that I quite like from an operational perspective was the storage bins underneath here. And what they've actually done, they've done this little notch here so if you are coming into a dock, you could have a rope already tied up and let's have the rest of the rope coiled up and stored in this location. And then you can just whip it out really easily when you're coming into a dock and get 
a rope around a cleat and at least stabilize the boat. And then you can put your, your uh, flippers, fins, goggles, swimming stuff, or whatever else that you want in the other side because they are drained and they will flow out the back. So 300 horsepower V8 on this one. You can do the 200 as well. We got, as you saw, 50 knots. So she's a goes like a bat out of hell with this particular motor. And this is for towing a skier but if you want to do a biscuit, set it up on a bridle and take off from both cleats aft just there. And that's probably the better setup for that. Couple more drink holders in the table, which I'd forgot to point out there before. And grab holds everywhere. You know, we've got this powder coated black aluminium behind the seat here. And you just feel, I think the sensation I get uh, right now, even just moving around in this calm water is a low center of gravity. So if if you move your weight around the boat doesn't lean too much some of these smaller boats have a tendency to really want to lean over quite a bit this one doesn't have that tendency i'm putting that down to the 23 degrees of dead rise the fuel tank right deep down and low and not too much weight aloft essentially so guys come forward we'll, we'll close it up here um this is really a brand i think we need to pay attention to the cost effectiveness is one of its key selling points. If you're comparing it to uh, one of the other adventure boats or a rib, it does everything and more essentially, uh, minus the sleeping, which probably isn't of interest to many of you if you're looking at something like this. But there's so many things that just keep this boat simple, right down to the maintenance, the ownership, the transport and the operation, that if you want something pretty stylish, you don't have to have it in the gray, you can have it in the black or you can have it in the white. Um, pretty stylish, a lot of fun and super cool that doesn't have to scare everybody. <laughs> this is it, this is literally it. So I'll leave a link in the description below, go check it out, it's a new brand to Australia. I think it's worth paying attention to. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, share this with your mates if you think this is something they should see. I'm Dan Jones, you've been watching Dan's Boat Life, see you on the next one.